In our previous episodes of Diksha, we covered the four goals of life. Now, the there were a couple that are pretty straightforward, such as, um, let's say, pleasure and moksha that we hear about a lot. And, but the principles go a little further than the definitions themselves. So I'm um, in this episode. I thought I'd uh, delve a little bit into uh, the process of righteousness. And the reason I say the process of righteousness is because when we think about the four goals of life as uh, we relate them to uh, human life or human existence, but if we delve into the what is life, when people say, well, what is the meaning of life? People will think, well, what is the meaning of human life? And it's not really a question about what is the meaning of life, of existence. So Dharma, I think, being a way of life is one, one situation. But if we are looking at Sanatan Dharma, which is e eternal principles of life, or eternal, let's say, um, not what is right, but the way that life naturally is. And this is where we, we cross between uh, what is Dharma, what is right as in, in terms of being uh, in relation to us as human beings, and the way the, the universe functions as a life form. <clears throat> And the reason I say the universe functions as a life form is because we, we abstract human existence uh, to the point where we think that when we define something as universal, we apply to what we consider um, uh, important to us. So sometimes even in the definition of universal, we apply it in a limited sense to a uh, particular society. So that could be simple things like when we when naming of objects and we call it a universal uh, connection in an object, then but there's not, I mean there's no proof that has been used anywhere beside that particular um, country, let's say for example or field. So the the use of the word universal, we need to realize when we apply it to Sanatan Dharmic. Um, let's say, way of thinking, we have to realize that we are talking about things that apply to existence. So that's the whole point of what I'm trying to make there is that when we say righteousness, that uh, one of the goals of life is to be righteous or to live rightfully or to live in a way that is in the natural order with nature, we are not talking about uh, dharma of society, which is the right way to act in a society. Because throughout history, um, different societies value different things as being right. Some societies that were more warlike favored uh, the person who was able to kill the most and the person who was able to... to um, to plunder the most. Some societies favored uh, in righteous living uh, high intellects and debates like the Greek and the Roman uh, empires. So, and even well, like the Mughal empires, for example, they were very warlike people. So their value of righteous conduct or right conduct was somebody who could be a good general in the army and who could plunder and 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 just be a killer. So we have to realize that the right conduct or dharma is social and eternal right conduct or sanatana dharma is 
the natural way of nature. And natural means it is beyond the influence of humans. And the, the reason I'm making that distinction is that for the social structure or dharma, we can influence the direction things take to a certain extent, of course. But eternal dharma or sanatana dharma or eternal right conduct cannot be influenced. It's you, let's say, through any form of studying or inquiring or observing the, the way that nature functions, you can learn to align yourself or your life or your practices or your um, beliefs, whatever, your, your, the, the fabric of your life, you can align yourself to the natural flow of nature. And that is righteousness in, re in relation to sanatana dharma or eternal right conduct. Because, like for example, <clears throat> you will derive the principles that follow, like karma, you'll derive um, principles like detachment from understanding the way that the universe works, that the structure of the universe is, that the way nature is. When you understand nature, you understand the way that things will happen or will eventually happen. And it's not, I'm not trying to put and. So we can, we can take that negatively and we can take that positively. Now, and, well, even when applying it to Sanatana Dharma, it's merely a matter of our opinion. It doesn't really change what Sanatana Dharma is or the eternal principles of the way that the universe works. So, let's say if we choose to align ourselves to understanding the principles of the universe and to um, figuring out the best way to go with the flow of the natural way of nature, then it helps us um, navigate life. But if negatively we say, well, there's no point in trying and we do not want to to, let's say, even understand the way of nature, then that could take us down where we never feel that anything is working out for us. For us. So it's, a, it's more a matter of the alignment of thought and philosophy with understanding the way that nature works. So this is where, as I mentioned earlier, where we can say that the principles of Sanatana and Dharma unfold when we say righteousness or righteous conduct. Because then you can speak about, like I said, the laws of karma, which is we understand that, um, that basically for every action has an equal and opposite reaction, which is physics. We have... For example, the caste system, which is like a lot of people, even the caste system taken in a dharmic way is a social structure. But the caste system is also a natural law of the nature of things, the lives of things, which is that like in a previous episode, we went through the caste system, but basically that you have those that align themselves with <clears throat> the order of things. And there are those that, are, that have absolutely no interest in being of any use to anyone beside themselves. And which gives rise to the whole structure, which has the different variables and the different uh, degrees of um, alignment and misalignment, let's say. 
and many more of the sanat and dharmic let's say rules or principles come from the basic understanding of what nature is the the yugs like uh kal yug and dwarpa yug and these yugs also come from the understanding of the way that nature naturally unfolds so that's why in the episode on righteousness i didn't delve too much into that part of it because righteousness as being the right way to live we have come to identify that as being a social a strict strictly social structure when in fact sanatan dharmic righteousness is the understanding of the natural course of nature and aligning yourself to the natural course of nature and in that definition there is no clear cut right or wrong in terms of um let's say conduct those are structural social dharmic principles so i wanted to make that definition that uh, distinction sorry about sanatan dharma and dharma which is completely different although we are using more or less the same word so this is my short presentation on righteousness and the take home from this is that sanatan dharma deals with the natural course of nature and understanding and aligning oneself with the way that nature works and dharma is a social structure which is a miniature is a scale miniature scale model of sanatan dharma but it is a changing system so thank you for joining me today on my presentation on righteousness and i invite you to join me next thursday as we sit and discuss and uh, i share some ideas on the sanatan dharmic principles or the eternal principles of nature so this is omkar saying thank you for joining me on diksha and i'll see you next time